What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're going to be doing the very last review for Death Stranding. By this point, all the major gaming websites have put up their thoughts on this game over a week ago, but I actually think, after glancing at them, they're all completely wrong. While they may have beaten the bosses and seen the credits, they didn't really understand what Death Stranding is about. But I do. So today, we're going to be digging into the combat, collectibles, and crafting of Kojima's mysterious new title to see if this was worth all the trouble of destroying Konami and all the drama that's been going on. Now, in order to do this, there is going to be some very light spoilers. I'm not going to go in detail of any of the stuff about the giant plot twists or the nature of this universe, but in order to really talk about the story itself, we are going to have to at least vaguely hint at the world itself. What is going on at the heart of Death Stranding? Now, just right up front, I do want to admit that this is by far the hardest review I have ever worked on, so I really appreciate you watching it. And part of the difficulty of this game is that it is incredibly slow. It is just one of those things where 95% of the experience is walking from place to place, balancing your cargo, looking at beautiful vistas, and finding weird little hidden secrets like this spot where I found out you can take a nice warm bath with your bridge baby. Death Stranding is certainly one of those games that's a about the journey and the destination. It's about the plot, it's about the things that are going on, but it's also just about the random fights you get into and the trouble you find around every corner. While there is a lot of combat in this game in certain sections, overall it's just one of those experiences that's clearly not trying to be exciting, and it's certainly not fun. Now I wouldn't go so far as to call this game boring, but I want to try and just address the fact that if you're playing this game, you are occasionally going to get very very frustrated. Since the main gameplay mechanic is simply walking from place to place, there is a very slow and methodical process to each and every action, mostly because you are just a FedEx delivery guy. You're trying to just carry these things from one spot to another and hoping you don't fall down, because you will constantly stumble. Despite the fact that our hero Sam Bridges is apparently the most legendary person to ever be a carrier, he's actually kind of a goofball. At pretty much any time, you may find yourself stepping in a random soft spot and suddenly your giant tower of items is teetering back and forth and you need to try and tap the triggers to properly maintain your balance or else you'll tip over and lose everything. You know, it's like this, like here's me in real life, imagine if I had a giant baby on my chest like Sonic here, and every time I tried to walk even on the gentlest slope, everything starts flying all over the place. Death Stranding is a little bit goofy in ways that I don't think that even Kojima predicted, but part of the reason that this doesn't become annoying is that as you progress into this game, which is very very long, you get more and more ways to travel. At the start, obviously you're just a guy trying to walk walk from A to B, but you get things like robotic reinforcement legs that let you sprint at a much better pace, or even do super leaps over tiny rivers. There's things where later in the game you can unlock different vehicles, like trucks or motorcycles. And I think that these things, they really make you feel invested. It makes it where it feels like this world is growing and expanding because you yourself are taking the time and investing your own patience in trying to expand it. The main detail of this game that I feel like really needs to be addressed is definitely the climbing aspect, because a lot of this game is very, very rocky terrain, huge ridges or giant mountains that are very, very difficult to even start going up, but that's part of the reason that you have some very detailed climbing gear, things like ladders, climbing anchors, and things like that. But this also brings me to definitely the main part of the game that I think every other review got wrong. So as you start going around the world, the overall objective is that you're trying to connect everybody to a giant network. The idea is that America has been broken apart by this apocalyptic event called the Death Stranding, and by uniting everybody together again, spiritually, and sometimes even physically, it gives us a chance to really become one again, and survive this terrible, terrible freaking thing that's happened to all of us. And part of the way this is done is by essentially connecting them to the internet, called the Chiral Network, by going from place to place 
place and helping each of these people out, you again connect them to the internet. And by doing this, you connect yourself to the actual internet. Expanding the chiral network enables uh, definitely the thing about this game that I loved the most, which is that as the map expands and gets charged up, you can start to see other players' creations. So say you're walking along next to a river and you notice that it's way too far apart to try and just swim. You've done a scan of it and you can see that the center part of it is incredibly deep. Trying to submerge your body is definitely going to make it where you lose all the cargo you're currently carrying. So just to try and be precautious, you get your very limited ladders, drop it down to a rock in the middle, and make it not quite so dangerous. Well there's a chance that this ladder will appear in somebody else's world. Somebody else is going to be walking along along after they've connected themselves to the chiral network and they could by chance see your ladder on the ground and walk across it and leave a like they can actually press like on it making it more occurrences that'll appear in somebody else's world so therefore the most useful items are seen and used by the most players this essentially makes it where the longer the game is out the easier it becomes i mean this is definitely such a mind-blowing concept but basically since since there are now so many millions of players that are exploring this landscape and trying to fall down these hills, they themselves are trying to create all the gear so that they can traverse. They're installing ladders and climbing anchors and things like that to try and make it where uh, their own journey is easier, and thus, by happenstance, yours is as well. But that's only the tiniest part. The giant aspect of this is that by using crafting materials that are found around the world, you can actually do things like construct roads or things like power towers that will recharge your like robotic legs or your motorcycle making it where now hundreds and hundreds of thousands of players are without even talking to each other face to face are able to team up and brick by brick construct this giant electric superhighway that makes it where I can drive across the entire map by unlocking the chiral network and connecting myself to the internet I am seeing a completely different version of the world that was not made by Kojima, that was not made by any of the people over at his studio, but instead is made by you, is made by me, is made by the players. It makes it where every time I was playing this game and I managed to unlock the next giant section of the map, I was excited not just to see how easy people could have made this, how much they could have put these nice little shortcuts in there, but I was very invigorated to help myself. I wanted to not just find collectibles and find all these crafting materials to upgrade my own gear, I actually wanted to go out there and improve the map. I wanted to try and expand the projects that everybody was working on, that way we, as a team, can make the world a much smoother place. That does bring me though to the thing about this game that you're gonna need to try and get used to, which is the combat. I think that in general, the controls can be a little bit odd. Now we've already looked at the fact that your character loves to tip over like Humpty Dumpty, but we need to talk about the fighting because there is some very different systems. There is human combat and there's BT combat. The main bad guys in this game are these little ghostly figures who are floating along and they're completely invisible. The only way to see them is with a little detector on your shoulder that's constantly blinking as into their general location. It can be a vague system at times, and I've definitely died because I wasn't able to figure things out quickly enough, but when you're fighting the BTs, the thing you need to keep in mind is that they are ghosts. They are not going to stop, they're not going to hesitate. If they detect you, they're going to grab you. Now this is a little bit difficult, and honestly, there are occasions where I hated the BTs. As you go through the game, you start to find more ways to fight them instead of just hiding. You get like blood grenades that can disperse them, you get more opportunities and special super weapons that can basically disintegrate them, but I won't show you those. That stuff is nice, but I think that the weird part about this game is definitely the fact that it's not you seeing these ghosts, it's your bridge baby. That weird little infant on your chest that's like an aborted fetus floating around, it is like a magical being that's able to use its like sixth sense, it's not quite alive, it's not quite dead. It is the thing that creates the ability to see the BTs. And at times, I definitely found myself annoyed about the fact that if I got grabbed 
grabbed by the BTs or if I started trying to run from the BTs, my baby would start crying like crazy. Which does bring me to the number one aspect that I hated about Death Stranding. There is so many gimmicks. There are so many times when I found myself trying to repair my shoes or I was trying to actually, uh, there's like this stuff called time fall. Whenever it rains, it accelerates time. So you have to constantly use repair spray to reinforce the boxes of your items. And of course, the worst thing of all, you have to keep your baby happy. Whenever you stumble too much or fall off a particularly giant cliff, not only does it hurt your character Sam, it also makes your baby very, very angry. So you have to comfort it by literally looking down at it and shaking the controller to rock it back to sleep. This is not fun. This is not an enjoyable part of the experience. It is a chore that I feel like does, at least minorly, undermine the experience. And to me, that is a detriment. With that being said, though, I do think that the way that the BT encounters are handled is nice because they are sporadic. Thankfully, you are not going to be running from these ghosts all the time. They're not sporadic popping out like freaking haunted house spooky terrors all over the time. Instead, they're very, very hit and miss. Certain missions will have you going through BT territory, and it makes it where when you actually encounter these monsters, you're always afraid because you don't get dulled to it. You don't get a chance to be desensitized to the terror, and when you make a mistake and get grabbed and you see their true form, which is a giant octopus, this will change the entire map around you into their own little BT dimension and you have to try and escape it or defeat this BT super boss thing. These things are great. I, honestly, I think that this stuff really, really works because it is so intermittent. I like the fact that when I'm fighting a BT, it feels like a fight. I'm never just kind of blasting them and running away. However, that does bring me to the other combat, the stuff that I think is perhaps more Metal Gear Solid-ish, which is against the humans themselves. So in this distant future, you are a courier. Obviously, you're trying to deliver packages from all over the place, and this is something that's considered to be very, very important, a job that is very, very prestigious. And for some reason, there are people who have decided to basically become obsessed with couriers and are trying to steal your packages. These people are called mules, and they're basically the evil humans of the game. Now, to be clear, these guys are not particularly tough. After you've gotten used to fighting all the ghosts and super monsters, it's actually kind of easy to just take out a couple of these losers out in the field. Now, there is two things to this. You can use a lot of stealth by hiding in the grass or creeping around. A lot of times, if you have to go through mule territory, you can usually just skirt across the edges without really being busted. But if for some reason you do get spotted, this is when the combat actually unfolds. You can punch these guys in the face and use basic close quarters combat, CQC, to try and combo these guys down and avoid their electric spears. If they hit you, it will affect your health or your consciousness meter, and if they knock you out, obviously you're going to get robbed. Now, the thing I actually like about the way this game goes is, going through it, you're constantly getting stronger. Your literal body is trained by the tasks you go through. Your legs get stronger and have better balance, you can carry a heavier load, and you also get bigger and more intricate weaponry that can be customized the deeper you go into it. Like at the beginning, all I have is my fists to defend myself, but eventually I get things like smoke grenades that can create electronic decoys to try and allure all the mules over there, or I could do something like, uh, this is my favorite thing, this is the bolo gun. It lets me shoot a series of weighted balls that will tie people up, making it where they're not dead, but it will definitely incapacitate them and allow me to do things like steal their vehicles or investigate their weird stuff. Their technology is so mysterious in and of itself. Like at one point I was walking along through this base and I discovered a holographic rock which turned out to be a hidden safe filled with all sorts of sweet side quest items. The universe of Death Stranding is certainly fun and just trying to explore each of the maps is 95% of the appeal. But now that brings me to the one part that I think is definitely going to be the most divisive, which is the plot. 
Hideo Kojima has always been a man that loves his really, really complicated stories with multiple characters and weird motivations, but this one definitely goes way farther than anything else. This world is filled with people that have ridiculous names like Fragile and Dead Man, and I think that the biggest thing I have wrong with this game is that at times it is just so self-fulfilling. Now, I think that the general idea behind it, the fake science, the, the idea idea of how we're trying to survive this apocalypse, that's fantastic. I also think that the voice acting is incredibly top-notch. Even the random people you encounter, like while you're trying to deliver packages, of course you're having to go to these little tiny outposts, these people each have their own little tiny stories that you can learn about by just talking to them and doing their side quests. And you see that a lot of these people are very, very hollow by the things they've had to do to survive. But I think that the general theme of the idea of, oh man, this is a world where death is bad and nobody can really truly earn their own demise. It gets so ridiculous. And without actually revealing too much, there are several plot twists in this game that get so ridiculous that I just couldn't even believe it. It got to the point where I was actually taken out of the game because it felt like it was trying too hard. This universe is really, really compact. I think the idea of like time fall and all the weird spooky events that are happening, each of them has their place. But at times, when you put them together, it is just a little bit too much. Okay, so normally I like to end my reviews with just putting a big number on it, but just for a moment, I do want to talk to you face to face and explain just some final thoughts on what's really going on with Death Stranding. So normally, when I'm writing these reviews, actually putting a number on it is by far the easiest part. I have my giant script in front of me, and I kind of just measure up the positives versus the negatives, and I try and calculate it out mathematically to put one very customized score to it. But with Death Stranding, I'm having an incredible amount of trouble because... This is one of those games that it, I played it so much this weekend and I really, really enjoyed my time, but I'm not sure if everybody will. This is more than just an interactive movie. This is more than just a weird art piece. This is a different step in the gaming revolution. I think that when Hideo Kojima said that this is a strand game, basically saying that it's the first in an all new genre, he is actually correct. And it makes it where trying to rate it is difficult, but I'm gonna do my very, very best. I am just going to say, if you enjoyed what you saw in this video, buy the game. Don't worry about my score, make up your own mind, be your own person. But if you are still on the fence, let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Death Stranding an 8 out of 10. Never have I seen a game be so good and so controversial at once. I mean, already, even as I record this video, it has been getting downvote bombed like crazy all over the internet for the last 72 hours, which to me almost feels like a weird statement itself. A game that's about the power of the internet and the power of connections, and people are using the connections of the internet to attack the game itself. It's peculiar, it's art, and it's very, very different. And I think that this is just basically all parts of Kojima's larger vision. Thanks so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do be the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. I basically did not sleep this entire, like, last five days to play this game, and I have no regrets. <laughs> I'm ready for my baby adventure. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last, or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.